All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Should you buy a hybrid car? Well, today I'm in a late 2014 Toyota Auris Hybrid to have a chat with you about EVs and hybrids in general. I might surprise you now being a big petrol head, but I quite like hybrids. There are lots of reasons to like them. They're very good, even if they do make you feel a little bit like an Uber driver. Firstly, though, can I just point out that if you're thinking of buying one of these for environmental reasons, then you're an idiot. Hybrids have done more damage to the planet than the Enola Gay. That's not a flippant comment, by the way. But I suppose in the search for sustainable motoring, you've got to crack a few eggs to make an omelette, I suppose. You might think that because less toxins come out of the exhaust that it's somehow better for the environment, but the whole process of making an EV or a hybrid is quite carbon heavy. These kinds of vehicles have a huge carbon footprint just by the time they leave the factory, due to the fact they're much more complicated to manufacture. I read somewhere recently that your average EV takes seven years before it's fully carbon neutral. People don't think of this, do they, when they buy one? And that's what I mean, don't buy one for environmental reasons, because there's more to it than you think. Lots of people, mainly in Los Angeles, drive these kinds of cars with their noses in the air and a holier-than-thou expression, thinking that they're somehow better than you because they're looking after the environment. And that just isn't the case. The process of making this kind of car involves a lot of dangerous mining of cobalt, nickel, copper, lithium, and it's usually done by child slaves. All those ingredients are then loaded onto the dirty, polluting tanker, where it's then shipped halfway around the world to the factory. Then it's shipped halfway around the world again, Also, somebody with overly shiny shoes can sell it to you, along with some gap insurance and SuperGuard. Environmentalists often just sweep those details under the carpet. Anyway, enough negativity, let's get on to the positives, and there are many. Lots of companies make hybrid cars these days. To be honest, a lot of them have had their hands forced into it. But anyway, Toyota and Lexus are the best at it. They've been doing it far longer than anybody else, and I think they've perfected it. A lot of companies just slap a hybrid badge on the back of a car just because it cuts out at traffic lights or at a stop sign. Whereas Toyota and Lexus use their Synergy Drive system, which means you can glide along in EV mode without using a drop of fuel, without the engine kicking in. It's really clever. Now, over the years, I've had a few Priuses. I had a Lexus CT200H that I had for nearly a year. So I do quite like them. I see the points of them. I do see the appeal. And with every new generation, they are getting better and better. They also change the way you drive. I know this sounds a little bit geeky now, but you can see on the display where your power is coming from, either from the battery or from the engine. So subconsciously, you just change the way you drive. You're much more delicate with the accelerator because you just try and eke out as many miles as possible from the battery without letting the engine kick in. It's just a natural sort of reaction to it. So for example, I'm doing 30 miles an hour. I'm in pure electric mode and I'm ever so gently pressing the accelerator so that the petrol engine doesn't kick in. Under the bonnet of this particular Auris is a 1.8 litre four-cylinder petrol. There we go, I've crept up to 40 miles an hour and I'm still on battery. It's quite impressive really. I know it's a little bit geeky, but this is the world we're moving towards. The good thing is as well, as soon as you take your foot off the accelerator, if you're going downhill or you're coasting, it will recharge the battery. So with this particular model, there's no need to to plug it in. It's not a plug-in hybrid, it's just a standard hybrid. Because you'll drive it like a nervous nun, you'll get nearly 60 miles per gallon. By the way, that's imperial gallons, not US gallons. I've had several comments from people in the States suggesting that I've done a VW and falsified my my MPG records. The only negative with hybrids, especially one with a a four-cylinder petrol and a CVT gearbox, when you accelerate, it does make a bit of a racket. For example, listen to this. It sounds like this like it sounds like the clutch is slipping it's not it's just how they sound around town you'll average nearly 60 mpg on a motorway run you'll get the same sort of figure but if you do lots of motorway miles you're probably still better off buying a diesel engine here in the uk it only costs around 40 pounds to fill the tank full of petrol and you'll get between 350 and 400 miles out of that tank so they are very efficient and you'll get between 350 and 400 regardless of where you drive it whether it's pure city driving or on a motorway run I think the most I ever got out of my CT200, which is basically the same car as this, was about 410 miles, I think, off memory. One positive aspect that's often overlooked is the noise, or lack of, apart from the the noise when you try and floor it. General sort of day-to-day driving where you're just creeping around, it's in virtual silence, and it's kind of addictive. We live in a noisy, chaotic world, and it's quite nice to get in something that's just silent. It makes you unwind and de-stress. 
You might not think that silence is up there on your list when shopping for a new car, but trust me, once you've had a hybrid, it's difficult to get back in a conventional car. Road tax here in the UK is cheap. This particular model is free, so you don't pay anything at all, it's zero. On my old CT200, that was a 2011 or 12 model, that was £20. So yeah, they're very cheap to tax. Because the battery charges from the, the regen braking and the petrol motor, you don't need to plug it in. So that's another positive. That eradicates any range anxiety that you might get from a full EV. There's no more panicking that you've only got 12 miles left because with this, you just simply stop by a fuel station and put some more in. I do like the way that they just glide along effortlessly. From the exhaust pipe, they emit fewer carbon, so they are more eco-friendly than a standard car, if you forget about how they're made. Another positive thing, on the whole, they're quite reliable. I know technically there's more things to go wrong because you've got an electric motor, a battery pack, plus a whole host of other things. But because the petrol engine's kicking in and kicking out, it's not under any strain or stress. So I imagine if you compared this engine with, a, with the engine from a conventional car with a similar sort of miles on it, I imagine it's in better shape. That's purely guesswork, by the way. I'm not an expert. The battery packs are good for about 12 years. I've never personally had one fail on me, but I have heard of it with Priuses and things. And they are expensive to replace, so bear that in mind. When they get to 15, 16 years old, you might have to put a new battery pack in it that could cost a couple of grand, which will probably be more than the car's worth at that point. Having said all that, I've been in Uber Priuses with 300,000 miles on the clock and they're still going strong. So they're obviously quite reliable, otherwise taxi firms wouldn't use them. They're very cheap to run, they're very cheap to tax. They're quite cool to drive in a weird sort of way. So yeah, I like them. There are lots of positive aspects to them. There is one negative aspect to mention. As a used car dealer, whenever I get a hybrid in, they always stick to the forecourt. They don't sell quickly at all. And I don't know why that is, because they're getting more and more popular. People are more familiar with them. So you would think they would sell like hot cakes, and they just don't. Every time I get a Prius or another hybrid in stock, it can take weeks and weeks to sell. And during that same time period, I can sell dozens of diesels. It just doesn't make any sense. I would definitely recommend one, especially if you've got a commute which involves lots of stop-start traffic or lots of city driving, because they make perfect sense. And I can sort of see why people drive them with their noses in the air, because it does make you feel less guilty than if you're in something big and polluting. So in the words of Simon Cowell, it's a yes from me. So thanks once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.